Hey Wargamers, welcome back to the channel Death From Above Wargaming. I'm Aaron and I am back with another Battleetics powered analysis on one of our clan favorites, the Shadowcat. Uh, we're going to be looking at Alt Config M, which is right out of Ill Clan Recognition Guide number 9. Uh, this thing is a, just a stone cold killer. This is two large pulse lasers, which everybody knows how much I love clan large pulse lasers. Probably the most broken weapon in the game. Uh, it's got two ER large. Thin clock's in a 2400 plus battle value though. So is it gonna be worth the points? I don't know. Uh, it's got mask. Um, we'll see. Is it another clan glass cannon or is this thing gonna hold up? Guys, stay tuned, get dialed in. We're gonna look at all the numbers. It's coming right up. All right, here we are. Uh, technical overview of the Shadowcat M. I mean, holy crap, 2438 battle value for a 45 ton mech. That's insanity, um, which, you know, that that is the clans. So this thing was built in 3054, um, the, the Shadowcat was. Um, this variant, uh, allegedly, I, when I looked it up on Master Unit List, I believe it said 3054 as well. I'm going to look it up again right now live on camera because I don't believe my notes. Shadowcat. Let's see. What do you guys think? Uh, Shadowcat M. It says 3054. So that was after the Battle of Tukid. Um, I think this thing was brought on by Clan Novacat. Anyway, uh, it moves 6-9. Uh, it's got 6 on the jump as well. And it has mask. It's got 13 double heat sinks, an XL fusion engine, endo steel, and ferrofibrous. Uh, and it's got pretty decent armor, so 87.6%. I mean, I think anything over 80% armor coverage is sufficient, not great. Um, but 87 is definitely really good. Um, so interested to see how this thing does. The one thing that jumped out at me when I was when I was pulling in all the data for this mech was that. The large pulse lasers, they have no arm actuators, ju just upper. So no lower, no hand. That means you can arm flip and fire those pulse lasers basically 360 degrees, uh, which is pretty phenomenal. Uh, and then they're backed up by or backed up by two clan ER medium lasers, which shoot forever uh, for a medium laser. So very excited to see how this one does. Um, but I think it's going to need to be able to do a lot to overcome that battle value. So let's dive in. We'll start with the offensive benchmarks. Um, it's pretty flat. It's a pretty flat curve. Um, I mean, damage comes on strong at about 20 inches. Uh, and then, you know, right at, I believe, 15 inches or 14 inches is where the, uh, the clan um, ER mediums come into play. Um, yeah, so 15 inches is where they come into play, right? They shoot as far as a large laser. I think I knew that. Um, heat is pretty substantial. So if you look, let's start at the top. Let's look at the red line ACD. Um, you can see that this thing builds up a chunk of heat every turn. It's like five points of heat if you alpha strike um, every turn starting at 15 inches. So basically in six turns, you're shutting this thing down. Um, so you do need to be careful on those alpha strikes. When we look at the optimized damage, there are places where we can take on a little bit of heat and build up um, you know, a little bit of, of extra damage there, not a lot. So our baseline ACD, which again, that's no more than four points of heat, that's 224.1 uh, points of damage over 12 turns. Optimized, we can get, up, get it up to 231. That's not, it's, it's a 3.5% gain, it's not enormous. Um, and then, of course, the red line ACD. That means if you decided you were going to just alpha strike every turn, um, 150 points of damage, right? And, and by alpha strike every turn, I mean alpha strike to the point at which you won't shut down. So basically, in this case, it rides at 25 points of heat. Um, all right, so how did it do against the Javelin and our Lethality Index against our targeting dummy there? Um, it did really well. So it hit 100% kills by, I believe, turn 10. Its average time to kill is 6.31. Um, it doesn't do a lot of critical hits, 3.22. It's about average, right? Only has four weapons. But the average damage per hit is 8.6, very high. Um, the other thing that blew me away was the number of 
head kills that this thing had. Um, and again, you know, I guess that's just courtesy of, you know, there's big damage on pulse lasers and the accuracy um, of, the, of the weapon and, and the fact that you're just hitting all the time with them. So pretty interesting there. Um, you know, overall, this thing, you know, doing more than the Flashman, but of course, it's like way more expensive. The Flashman, I think, where were we? 1779, if I recall uh, correctly, and this thing is 2400. So it's a big difference. Um, but let's take a look at survivability. I'm interested to see if the mask uh, contributes to keeping this thing alive or not. All right, so before we look at mobility, the armor diagnostic, um, honestly, it's it's pretty good. The only thing that sort of confuses me here, and I, and I guess this is an Omnimech thing, right? I don't know why you wouldn't put more armor on the arms and take just a little bit off those torsos. Um, it's interesting. You know, the other thing that's weird about this mech is it only has eight pips on the head, which, again, like, I don't know. It's just, it's like... <laughs> I would, I would rather take that pip, you know, off the CT, which is a 20. The side torsos are at 18 pips. Um, the arms are only at 10. So basically, if you hit it with a PPC um, of the clan variety, you're basically ripping. You're leaving the arm with two points of structure. So that's kind of scary when you've got, you know, so much invested in those arms in just about every configuration of Shadowcat. Um, but I digress. So mobility analysis... So you can see this thing, um, the way Battleetics engages mask is in order to mitigate the risk of a frozen hip and things like that, it just it uses it every other turn and it tries to keep that average mod up as high as possible. Um, you do see a little bit of, you know, of degradation um, over time there, but but really that's, that's a bit deceiving because the mask is on, the mask is off, the mask is on, the mask is off. Um, still, it is taking a substantial number of motive hits, which I was surprised to see um, because the, the slots are padded out um, with jump jets. So the legs, you know, you've got your four leg actuators and you've got the two jump jets, um, which helps to, to sort of um, sink damage into those legs so you're not taking um, motive hits. But, you know, such is life. I mean, the, uh, the legs, I'm looking at the armor diagnostic, the legs only have, actually the legs have 18 pips of armor. Um, so that's pretty substantial, but you know, again, you get hit with a couple of PPCs, you're already internal there. Um, and you know, it only has uh, 14, 11 points of structure on the arm or on the, on the legs rather. So, all right. Survivability overall, let's take a look at the, the survivability. A lot to talk about here on the shadow cat, lots of interesting things going on. Survivability is 86%. Our flash man was 89%. That's really good. I mean, you're talking about a mech, and I know I'm comparing the one we just did, you know, to, to the Shadow Cat, but it's an interesting point of comparison because it's a 30 ton difference, um, you know, in favor of the Flashman, but this thing costs so much more. So far, it looks like it could line up. Um, we'll see, though. Again, 2400 is a lot of points. Um, 87.6 um, coverage, you know, leading to 86% survivability. And most of those, again, of course, coming from the XL engine, um, it's about equal, almost equal, with um, CT and head death. So those are 6.7%. Engine deaths at 7.3%. So what does that tell me? It tells me that the XL engine's really not hurting this thing too much. Um, it certainly is contributing. Um, you know, it, it doesn't. It doesn't mean that the mech would die half as you know half as much if it didn't have an XL engine. Um, because you just rip off the side torsos and then, you know, then you'd get internal. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I think with the Shadow Cat, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I guess survivability is good. I, I don't know. I mean, this is probably why it's just so expensive. All right, let's take a look at the efficiency. I'm, I'm very curious to see, you know, where these numbers shake out because, you know, again, it's doing a lot of damage. It is surviving. I'm, I'm trying to do the math in my head. Is it is it gonna is it gonna shake out? Let's just jump in and see. All right. So here it is, the big reveal, of the efficiency analysis, my favorite of all. Um, so survival rate eighty six points uh, eighty eighty six point zero percent. Uh, damage loss four point one percent. Very very good. And the efficiency is six point five two. So the flashman was seven point oh six. So pound for pound, the flashman is allegedly. Um, a better mech. But here's the caveat, guys. 
the Shadow Cat M, much like the the Battle Cobra, um, these things are so similar. The gunnery sensitivity is negative. Um, it's it's just it's like negative 0.032 according to Battleytics. That means that as you invest points you're actually getting a negative return on investment. It's not valuable. We've seen this multiple times with Pulse Heavy Max. That's because you get the minus two. It's baked into the cost of the Mac. So increasing um, you know, your gunnery score to hit something that you're already gonna hit and there's just no, it's, it's no return. So the, the best place to play this is at a two, um, you know, at a two gunnery and again, you know, you're looking at uh, an effective ACD of 222.46. It's very good. Um, you know, but the Flashman actually is, you know, again, pound for pound better. But I would take this mech over the Flashman, I think. Um, I mean, preferably I would take neither of them. But if I had to take one or the other, I think I would take this mech. And I think I would take this mech because I would actually probably play it um, at a Gunnery 3. Um, or even a gunnery four, I'd put one of my weaker guys in it. I'd try to keep that battle value down because again, the increase to, um, you know, gunnery and piloting, it's a percentage thing. So you're going to be paying a ton to get this 2,400 point mech up to that next tier. Um, and you just run them around and shoot. I, I mean, I think the survivability is there. The speed is there. I'm thinking about using this thing practically on the battlefield. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm interested you know, to, to hear what you guys think, Flashman, Shadowcat M, if we put them in Solaris and we did a grudge match, you know, which one would win? Forget Battle Value, just take it off the table. You know, we drop them both in with three, four pilots. Um, who would win? I'm curious. I want to I know what you think. Um, all right, speaking of the battlefield, let's take a look at, uh, at the rolls. All right, so here we are on the rolls side. Um... Tell you what I'm thinking. Cavalry, obviously. This thing is fast. It can zip across the battlefield. It, I mean, it can shoot in close. Um, it's survivable, you know, so I think it could play that role. It's not, not the primary role I would play it in. The primary roles I would play this in is the, you know, quote-unquote, piss-off-your-opponent uh, role, which is, you know, either skirmishing or picketing. Um, you know, picketing can be a little bit dangerous, but it depends on the, the comp of your star. Um, I'll explain that in a minute. Let me start with Skirmisher. I think that's more intuitive. And it's probably the way 99% of the time you will end up playing this mech, in my opinion. Um, it runs into 15 inches, it stays at 15 inches, and it shoots at 15 inches, or hexes, depending on what you're doing. You don't get it any closer. You run around. You use your speed to get in optimal positions. You find their weakest mech, and you just shred it. Um, I think the thing has the big guns again, um, you know, if we're looking at the threat assessment on the bottom, it's peak alpha strike is at 15 inches, 34 points of damage. That's nasty. I mean, that's pretty good coming out of a 30, uh, sorry, 45 ton mech. Um, you know, again, you're doing five points of heat every time you do that. So, you know, maybe you fire two pulse lasers and one of those ER mediums just to keep yourself cool so that you can stay mobile. Or, you know, if they've got their, you know, their big dumb fire support mech and they decide to stay stationary and, you know, they don't have um, a tar you know, an, uh, basically a mod, a target mod on them, uh, you know, TMM, if you will, uh, and you want to alpha strike, go for it. If you're in their rear arc, go for it. But most of the time, you're not going to be doing that every turn, right? I think you're you're hitting at 15. Maybe you're moving into 10. You're backing out. You're moving in. You're backing out. That's how I play this mech, because it's too valuable to sacrifice in a in a picket roll, in my opinion. But I would play it in a picket roll. Here's where my mind is. You know, I'm thinking about clan on clan. It's a five on five. You've got some big nasty mechs on the board. Um, you know, and you want to use this thing to basically, you, you put mask on, you flank up, you know, you tear up the sideline, and you want to get in and just annoy one of their fire support mechs, their stone rhino, right? Or, um, you know, their, their, what's, what's the Nova Cat that Tom used against me? Is it the C with all the LRMs? You know, one of those dumb mechs, and you just get in there at six inches, you know, at five inches, and you're just chewing them up, right? To the point that they have to turn and start to shoot you. 
in that scenario, you're using Mask more. You're trying to get your target mod up as high as possible so that you can survive, right? You're using your jump jets to, to use terrain to, you know, to win initiative, to get behind them, right? I mean, these are the things that, you know, you can do with this mech. I think it has the mobility to do it. And don't forget, it's got 360 degree arc of fire, you know, with those large pulse lasers. So if you want to take um, an opportunity or you get outmaneuvered, um, you can always flip your arms and blast something behind you. So it can play that role. Again, I think number one for me is skirmisher is how I would play this thing. All right. So anyway, you know, I guess uh, the, the moral of the story is the shadow cat's a really good mech. Um, it's a little pricey and that's going to drive the efficiency down. Um, you know, it's, it's funny. I was thinking about the Flashman, and I, and I was so hard on the Flashman in that review, even though it had, you know, a pretty decent efficiency score. Um, I'm just not high on a mech that has, um, such limited utility. You know, three large lasers, I can only shoot at 15 inches or 15 hexes. Like, it just doesn't do it for me. The Shadow Cat, even though it has a lower, you know, raw efficiency score, I think the utility of the mech is much higher. Pulse lasers, you know, the, the, the reducing the, the variability um, of this game, of any dice game, right, and ensuring that you can hit more when you need to hit that's, you know, that's liquid gold. And that's reflected, you know, in the gunnery sensitivity analysis. The fact that you can turn on mask um, and get to a spot on the battlefield um, that is extremely meaningful, right? Um, and get there very quickly. Even if you're taking a risk and pushing it two turns, right? Getting to that objective. Um, that stuff is very, very valuable. So to me, you know, the Shadow Cat is, it's not a must-take mech. I still think it's it's grossly overpriced. I think there are better bang for buck clan mechs. Um, and, you know, I, I hate to say it, but like when you look at clan mechs, you know, looking at the battleetics analysis and understanding your best bang for buck is like, it's super important, at least to me, because clan mechs are so fragile. Um, and if you lose one, you're, you know, you're in, you're in trouble because you're playing again, you know, unless you're playing other clans, you're playing uphill battles, right? You're playing a five on eight or a five on 12 in some cases, right? Depending on, on the skill levels and things like that. Um, so taking, you know, 2,400 BV, um, and sinking it into a 45 ton mech, I don't know. That's, that's a, that's a tough ask. Um, but overall, you know, I think it's a good mech. I think it's, um, it's definitely, I think, better than the Prime. In fact, let's go to Battleetics.com real quick. I'm going to pop that up. Um, I have the Prime here. So the Shadowcat Prime, so just as a rehash, right, that's 2ER medium lasers, except um, it has a Gauss rifle instead of the Large Pulse. However, the battle value is 300 points-ish cheaper. Um, this again, it's got the mask and everything else, but the efficiency rating is actually lower, 5.93. It just uh, it, it doesn't do as well. Um, the optimized damage, so you can't push it. Uh, baseline, optimized, red line, it's all the same. It never builds up any heat. So it, it's only, it caps out at 190.2. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it, it could do, it, 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 you know, it, it, the, the prime, the prime's no good. So if you're gonna take a shadow cat, the M is the one I would look at for sure. Um, but that's it. That's all I have to say about the shadow cat. I am interested to know what you guys think about it. What's your favorite variant? Um, why you love the smack or why you hate it? A um, couple things. One, subscribe. Uh, if you've already subscribed, fantastic. Give us a like, leave us a comment. Uh, and if you want to get more involved in the channel, you can head on over to Patreon. Uh, we have three different tiers. One dollar is, uh, is the minimum buy-in. That, that really helps out the channel and shows us that you love us. Uh, speaking of love, uh, head on over to Aries Games and Minis. Give some love to that guy. Uh, he's got minis, he's got dice, he's got books, he's got novels, the other kind of book. Um, all the things that you want uh, for Battletech. Uh, the Felder cases, we've talked about those before. He's got the Fighting Piranha decals. I just bought a lot of those. Um, so some really good stuff there. Um, also Hardware Studios products in stock at Aries Games and Minis too. So uh, got some of those for Christmas, uh, you know. Still sitting on the paint bench, not going to lie, but uh, hopefully we'll work on those, have those ready to go uh, by the spring, but we'll see. Anyway, guys, I'm all done. I'm wrapping it up. So thank you so much for watching. And of course, stay tuned. Always good stuff coming from Death From Above Wargaming.